When you hear the word Pegasus, chances are you think of the winged horse. According to the Greeks, Pegasus was the son of Poseidon and was caught by the hero Bellophoron. Bellophoron later fell from Pegasus' back while trying to reach the gods on Mount Olympus. And that concludes your Greek mythology lesson for today. It does have relevance to this hack, however, as many of the names used are based on Greek mythology. So let's get into the subject at hand, a totally different Pegasus. We're talking, of course, about the Pegasus spyware, which made a complete mockery out of Apple's iOS security and turned any iPhone into an incredibly powerful spying device. It's a fascinating and frankly terrifying piece of software. Our story begins in August of 2016, when a human rights defender called Ahmed Mansour received a text message. Mansour was the winner of the Martin Annals Award, which has been referred to as the Nobel Prize for Human Rights, and which is given out each year to people who are on the front line of the fight for human rights. The text message claimed to include a link to evidence of the mistreatment of prisoners in the United Arab Emirates and Mansour could have been forgiven for tapping the link and checking out the footage. Luckily for us, and for him, Mansour had already been targeted by hackers and viewed the anonymous message with some suspicion. That's why he reached out to Citizen Lab, a group that specializes in preventing digital threats to civil society. Citizen Lab worked with San Francisco's Lookout to analyze the link, and their investigation led them to uncovering the most sophisticated mobile spyware attack in history. They discovered Pegasus. So what would have happened if Mansour had tapped the link? Well, let's just say that the best case scenario was that he would have needed to toss his iPhone in the trash and buy a brand new one. And that's the best case scenario. Pegasus was developed by an Israeli cyber arms company called NSO Group. And Pegasus was capable of sneakily installing itself on Apple devices. One of the interesting things about Pegasus is that buyers can specify which features they want the spyware to include. These features range from call logs and contact lists to real-time GPS location, communications, and lots of other information, including passwords, and so much more. Pegasus sends this information back to its command and control servers, and the data is then shared with the client. Thought your WhatsApp messages were safe because they're end-to-end -end encrypted? Think again. Pegasus can easily snoop on WhatsApp and upload your messages to whoever paid to listen to them. And this is the same for many end-to-end -end encrypted applications. Even more sinister is that the spyware can turn on the microphone and camera even when the owner isn't using their phone. This changes any iPhone from a smartphone into an incredibly capable spy device that we carry with us everywhere we go. This level of control of an iPhone is possible because Pegasus is essentially a rootkit as I'll explain in a moment. The spyware took advantage of multiple zero-day vulnerabilities in Apple's iOS, meaning that it exploits bugs that even Apple itself didn't know about at the time. Finding one zero-day vulnerability is difficult, but the NSO group managed to find three of them and exploited them through their Pegasus spyware. This is amazing stuff. The three vulnerabilities that Pegasus used is why it was nicknamed Trident by security researchers, because it had three different prongs to its attack like the famed trident of Poseidon. Back in 2016, iPhones and Apple's iOS were renowned for their security. And so people were surprised to learn about the vulnerabilities. In fact, these were the first publicly disclosed zero day vulnerabilities for iOS. As was the case for Mansour, Pegasus attacks usually started with a phishing text message that included a malicious link. When people tapped the link, it opened up Safari and ran the payload that exploited the first vulnerability, which was called CVE 2016 4657. That was a vulnerability to Safari's WebKit, which allowed the attackers to run code that was downloading the next exploits. The next step was for Pegasus to use CVE 2016 4655, an iOS kernel exploit. Like any operating system, the iOS system kernel is the software at the core of a computer's operating system, and it has complete control of everything in the system. In other words, by gaining access to the iOS kernel, Pegasus had the highest level of access, the most privileged access to a phone's software. Gaining control of the iOS kernel is referred to as jailbreaking. Pegasus was sophisticated enough to detect if an iPhone had already been jailbroken, and if it had an existing backdoor, which it could then use instead. The third and final step was for Pegasus to use the vulnerability CVE 
2016-4656, which is a kernel memory corruption vulnerability. This meant that it could modify the system kernel to give itself admin privileges to execute the jailbreak binary and install the surveillance software. Like I said, once a piece of malware has control of the system kernel, it's game over from a security perspective. The malware can do whatever it likes. The really clever thing about Pegasus is that it could string these vulnerabilities together to get out of the Safari sandbox, to jailbreak the iPhone, and to install itself with root privileges. All a user had to do was tap on a single link to a web address in an email or text message. Once Pegasus was installed, the attackers could do pretty much whatever they wanted with the infected phone. As soon as Apple found out about this, they were able to patch the vulnerabilities with iOS 9.3.5, which was released less than two weeks after the exploit was made public. The problem, of course, is that not everyone updates their devices in a timely manner, and new vulnerabilities are constantly being found. The Pegasus spyware is still out there, and it's still for sale. And that's where the story ends. So as always, thanks for watching, and don't forget to leave a comment and hit the subscribe button. <laughs> Just kidding. You didn't think we were going to leave you hanging there, did you? There's so much more to this story. Pegasus dropped off the radar back in 2016, but it resurfaced this summer in 2021 after an Amnesty International Collective carried out the Pegasus Project, which were revealed the leak of 50,000 iPhone numbers that had been targeted by Pegasus. Those phone numbers included a bunch of people you've probably heard of, including the heads of state, journalists, high-profile business people, and human rights activists. According to analysis done by The Post, the list included the presidents of France, Iraq, and South Africa, along with the current prime ministers of Pakistan, Egypt, and Morocco, seven former prime ministers, and the king of Morocco. Reportedly, the NSO group charged half a million dollars to set up a client with the Pegasus system, and then charged an additional fee to actually infiltrate people's phones. NSO's contract with Saudi Arabia alone is worth a reported $55 million, according to Forbidden Stories. This was and is big business. You can probably guess what a zero-click attack is. They are aptly named. Basically, it is malware that can install itself with zero interaction from the victim. Hackers can send the malware to a mobile phone through SMS message, emails, missed calls, and many other ways, where it then executes itself without the phone's owner needing to tap on anything and remaining totally unaware of their new infection. These kinds of zero-click attacks have been around for quite a while, and they rely on the way that certain software works. For example, Apple's iMessage previews any text message from a sender, executing code automatically whenever a message is received. The same thing can happen with Apple's push notification service. Let's say you've been swiping away on Tinder and you've given the app permission to post push notifications. Pegasus, for example, could pretend to be Tinder and trick Apple's servers into sending a push notification that contained malware. Last year, Google's Project Zero revealed another exploit for iMessage, which uses CVE 2019-8641, a remote memory corruption vulnerability. This allows the attackers to bypass ASLR, address space layout randomization, and to remotely execute code on the target device. It's possible that Pegasus also took advantage of this, although it was patched in iOS 13.2 and Pegasus has still continued to infect devices. Pegasus has also been using Apple Music, iCloud, and PhotoStream services, as well as Apple Mail and the Apple Wireless Device Link protocol that all iOS devices use to communicate. It appears that the NSO group have access to so many zero-day exploits that as soon as one is patched, they just switch over to another one. The latest variant of Pegasus seems to have been delivered using a zero-click, zero-day vulnerability to iMessage in iOS 14.6. That's why Apple released 14.7 and 14.8 with only a week between them. This vulnerability was called CVE 2021 30807 and was present in a kernel extension that managed the screen frame buffer. It could be exploited to gain root level privileges to execute arbitrary code and manipulate memory functions. Now, if all of this has got you thinking about throwing your iPhone in the bin and switching to a Samsung Galaxy, you might want to hold on to your winged horses. That's because there is, of course, an Android version of Pegasus, which is called Creosaur, after Pegasus' brother in Greek mythology. Creosaur is able to do a lot of the same stuff, including logging key presses, recording phone calls, turning on the camera and mic, exporting application data, browser history, contacts, emails, and other communications. 
whether it's encrypted or not. It also includes a few added extras, such as the ability for hackers to take screenshots. Like Pegasus, Creosaur is stealthy, persistent, and targeted. Where it differs is that it doesn't necessarily need zero-day exploit to target an Android device. Instead, it uses a one-click routing application called Framaroot, which is able to find known exploits in the operating system to root the device. So what does this tell us? Well, the most important thing is that even though most of the attention has so far been focused on Pegasus, Android is just as vulnerable. And some people argue that it's actually easier for people to target Android, and that it's a lot harder to detect how widespread Creosaur is on Android devices. One of the reasons why Pegasus is so difficult to detect is that it uses encrypted communication with its command and control servers, and it can self-destruct if it doesn't work or if it's at risk of being detected. The zero-click version of Pegasus also deletes malicious messages and missed calls to hide its tracks. Some variants even disable iPhone's crash reports so that Apple can't diagnose their presence. So how can you track an exploit that leaves almost no tracks? Well, Amnesty International approached this problem by identifying known command and control servers, and then looking for communication links with those servers. It also released a mobile verification toolkit that takes known indications of a compromised device from Amnesty International's GitHub, and then acquires and analyzes iOS and Android's records to see if there's a match. The mobile verification toolkit isn't particularly easy to use, especially for people without technical expertise. But luckily, there are some other solutions available. For example, there's an app called iVerify that's available for both iOS and Android devices, which scans for Pegasus and Creosaur, and which can launch with just a couple of clicks. But let's face it, you're probably not a target. Pegasus is expensive to use, and it's generally deployed against specific targets. So unless you're a high-profile public figure, or you're working against an oppressive regime, you're probably safe. If you are unlucky enough to be infected by Pegasus or Creosaur, there are a few things you can do. On an unrooted Android device, you can carry out a factory reset. The problem is that you can't just back up and restore your files, because that will restore the infected files. If your Android device has been rooted, Creosaur will be installed as a native application and will reinstall itself after a factory reset or a version upgrade. The only way to take it out is to install a custom ROM, which will remove the entire operating system along with Creosaur. iPhones can be even trickier to repair. That's because Pegasus can only infect iOS devices after jailbreaking the device. And once a device has been jailbroken, there's no real way to undo it. Pegasus can stay behind and relaunch itself after a factory reset, and it can also hide its tracks to make it difficult for people to figure out just how bad the infection is. So when we said that the best case scenario for Mansoor was that he would need to toss his phone and buy a new one, we were telling the truth. Experts suggest that once your iPhone is compromised, the best thing to do is bin it and get a new device. Pegasus is a fascinating piece of malware because of how brutal it can be, turning victims' smartphones into professional spying devices. The good news is the attacks are generally super targeted. And so, like I said, unless you're a high-profile public figure, you're probably safe. But these types of attacks tend to trickle down. So while you may not have to personally worry about this too much today, that probably isn't going to hold true into the not-too-distant future. It's an important reminder to all of us that nothing's truly secure in the digital age. And while we can protect ourselves as much as we can by trying to use strong passwords and avoiding suspicious links, there's not much we can do if we find ourselves in the crosshairs of a zero-click attack. So now that you've heard from us, it's over to you. What are your thoughts on the Pegasus attack? And are you surprised by the way it works? Let us know in the comments below. And subscribe and hit the bell icon if you want to be notified when we release future videos. See you next time.